Hey folks, Professor Fiore here. What we're going to do now is talk about RLC transient response. So we've already seen, right, we have videos on RC transient response and RL transient response. And the obvious question then is, well, what's it like with all three components, right? RL and C. Well, to be honest with you, we really should wait to do an appropriate analysis of this. For example, if we wait until uh, AC circuits, there are some good things you can pull out of RLC series resonant circuits, which would apply to this. Also, you could use a more advanced mathematical technique, uh, either called uh, S-domain analysis or Laplace analysis that would allow you to get very nice, accurate results. Be that as it may, I think it's useful to just sort of get a kind of a relaxed view of what's going on here. I wouldn't necessarily say an intuitive look at the circuit, but, um, you know, a more general, basic kind of introductory analysis, right? So that's the way I'm going to treat this. I'm not going to get into any heavy mathematical rigor. I just want you to get an idea of what's going on. And then, like I said, later on down the road, when you get through AC analysis and so forth, you can take a much closer look at this, right? This is why RLC circuits are not, the transient response is not in that uh, final section of the DC text, all right? It's a little bit different. We really need some more information before we can really dive into it, right? There's enough stuff there for just RC and RL, but anyway, not to belabor the point, let's start, see what we can get. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I've got a, three element series circuit, resistor, inductor, capacitor, but I've made the inductor really, really small. It's only one nano Henry. So it's so small, we can pretty much ignore it. It's basically like we have a 100 ohm resistor and a 10 microfarad capacitor. So when we did uh, RC analysis, transient analysis on this, we would say, you know, what's the, um, the uh, uh, response on this? time response, we would take the resistor, 100 ohms, the capacitor, 10 microfarads, multiply those together, right? That would give us the time constant, time constants RC. So 100 times the 10 mics gives us a millisecond. And we would say, all right, after five time constants, or in this case, five milliseconds, this circuit would be in steady state. So we would expect the capacitor to start at zero and then climb up until we get to the input voltage. So in our case, I'm using a 10 volt step, which is kind of like having a 10 volt power supply and a switch, All right, That's usually the way we would do it, uh, you know, in a textbook, something like that. So um, basically the same thing, right? So we would expect this voltage, the cap voltage to start at zero and then work its way up to 10 volts, okay? Uh, the inductor is so small that we don't really expect to see much of anything across this. And in reality, there would be a very small beginning spike because the uh, current through an inductor cannot change instantaneously. So all of the voltage, the 10 volts would actually drop across the inductor, but it would be there for such a tiny period of time. It's not even gonna show up on the, um, on the simulation. All right, so we can just basically ignore it. But anyway, let's, let's just do that. We'll do a transient analysis here. Um, I wanna see a little bit more than uh, the, the five time constant. So I'm gonna go out to 10 milliseconds here. And let's bring this over so we can see it. All right, get our legend. So the sort of olive green gray here is the generator. That's the 10 volt step, all right? The green, the obvious green is the inductor voltage, which like I said, is gonna be sitting right at zero. And then the maroonish sort of rusty red here is VC. So this is doing just what we expect, starts at zero, works its way up to the input, which is 10 volts, and it does that in roughly five time constants or five milliseconds. Okay, great, right? Nothing, nothing really new here. Now we come in and we change the value of the inductor. So I'm gonna bring this up to 10 millihenries, and we'll see what happens. Now with a larger value here, that initial transient that I was talking about, you know, is going to be stretched out. So it's not going to be so small that you can't see it like it is here. All right, so there is a little bit of a spike that we can now see. All right, 
colors haven't changed so this is still VL there's the capacitor and there's the input step all right so what ends up happening is like I said the current initially can't change because of the inductor so all of the voltage the 10 volts appears across the inductor but very very quickly that dissipates actually interestingly goes below zero volts actually goes negative and then comes back eventually to zero and then the capacitor rises kind of like we would expect now this is still relatively small in the RLC circuit a close look however if you really zoom in on the capacitor you'll notice that this curve has changed a little bit so let me go back to the first one All right you see that right look right there right where it starts to take off and you can see there's sort of a little bit of a divot in here it's a little slower to take off on the other hand look up here right on this sort of shoulder area go back to the original and you can see this is actually a little bit slower right the initial is a little bit slower so the addition of the inductor actually slowed this up a bit but sped this part up a bit kind of interesting there's an interaction here right remember these are energy storage devices so it's like the energy is kind of like bouncing back and forth between these two things and the bigger L is compared to C the greater this effect is going to be so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change this 10 millihenry I'm going to increase this up to let's say 50 millihenries now it's going to be much more obvious what's happening another transient analysis all right first thing I want to point out is the scale has changed all right the old scale was minus 10 to plus 10 new scale is minus 10 to plus 20 right so zero volts is down here now get the scale out or get the legend out here so colors haven't changed notice how the bigger inductor still has that same kind of effect right that initial spike that dies out and goes negative but it's really stretched out now right bigger inductor this is kind of what we would expect and a similar kind of thing is happening here with the capacitor you know that sort of exaggerated pokey beginning and the speed up back here those have also um, been exacerbated All right we look back at this one right there's not a lot of change between the 10 millihenry and the one nano right on the cap but then we go to the 50 millihenry and boom right we can see this thing as a matter of fact it overshoots it actually goes over 10 volts because what's happening here I mean, once we get up to this point on this voltage how is it getting positive how is it bigger than the input voltage because this voltage is negative in other words it's minus to plus so it's actually adding to the capacitor voltage right it's boosting it up basically remember kvl still has to work we got this this and this these three things have to add up so if this thing reverses it's like it's a source so we see in fact a slightly larger voltage than the source voltage sitting across the capacitor we get this hump right this is kind of interesting so what happens if we go further this by the way is referred to as overshoot this idea of the voltage going beyond the sort of stable point right the, the 10 volts in this case so let's go one step up further right so let's go from 50 to maybe 100 millihenries we'll try it again boom all right at least the scale hasn't changed right but look at the signal overshoots much worse as a matter of fact gets up and it actually goes uh, below right so it's above and below and then eventually gets to 10 on VC okay see this kind of just came up and then flattened out this thing goes above and then below and then flattens out and we see the same kind of thing happening out here with the inductor right that's been stretched out which is what you would expect right a bigger inductor has a bigger effect so that gets stretched out in time and it does the same thing right it goes up and down and then eventually settles out right so this when the thing kind of goes positive negative positive negative when it starts moving around a set point whether it's zero or in this case the input voltage we refer to that as ringing ringing is controlled by the damping a damping factor 
in this network. Now, damping is something that we talk about a lot um, in series resonance circuits and series RLC resonance circuits. Um, it's also known as Q. The reciprocal of it is known as Q. It's a very important characteristic. And essentially, the uh, damping is the ratio of the circuit resistance to the X sub L of the uh, inductor. In other words, the effective ohmic value of it at some you know, AC frequency. Right? Again, this is an item that we talk about in AC circuits. Right? The beginning of AC circuits, we define all this. But needless to say that the value of R here does play a role. If you have less damping, you get more ringing. In other words, the amplitude of, of this overshoot gets bigger, and we get more of these oscillations, more of these things going positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. It's like the shock absorbers in your car suspension. Right? They do the mechanical version of this. You know, mechanical resistance we call friction. It's basically the same thing. So um, if you have less friction, what happens in your car suspension? You know, the car bounces more. So the same thing would happen here. So I'm going to take uh, the circuit. I'm going to leave our, uh, L and C the same, but I'm going to reduce the value of our resistor. Right? So I'm going to cut that in half. We're going to go down to 50 ohms. So we have less damping now. This effect should get worse. There's also going to be a change, by the way, because you've got a 50 ohm here, the what we would have calculated is time constant. And a simple time constant in an L RLC circuit like this is not quite uh, the same thing when we just have a simple you know, RC or RL circuit. But in any case, you can clearly see that this has increased in amplitude. It's much more obvious. It's true for both, both the capacitor and the inductor voltages. So I'm going to just flip back and forth. All right, so that's the 100 ohm resistor. There's the 50 ohm resistor. Okay. So the magnitude, much greater, right? Much, much greater. And if you would think, well, can I go further? Huh. Can we go further? Yes, we can go further. Let's go down to 10 ohms. Whoa, look at that. Okay, so that was 100, that's 50, that's 10. Okay? This is almost starting to look like a sine wave. As a matter of fact, if we extend the analysis out here, we see something very interesting. So I'm going to run this out to 100 milliseconds. Whoa, look at that. All right, so... Capacitor voltage comes up, overshoots, undershoots, overshoots, boom, 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 and it rings. Okay, and the inductor is basically doing the same thing. So we refer to this, like I said, we, we call this ringing, right? This is actually a, an exponentially damped sine wave. That's what this is, right? And they're um, kind of opposite each other, the, the uh, inductor capacitor. Because again, you could kind of think of this as energy bouncing back and forth, the stored energy between the inductor and capacitor bouncing back and forth between them. All right. So damping will play a role in just how high these peaks are and how long it takes for these things to die out. If you have a circuit with high damping, you may not get any ringing. In other words, it may just come up and bloop, flatten out, which is what we saw in the initial circuits. Um, or you get just a little bit of overshoot and then it kind of dies out. Or you get, you know, maybe many, many cycles of this. And this frequency, right, how quickly this thing is bouncing up and down, is a function of the sizes of L and C. So all three of these things play a role. Right? They, they interrelate, they intermix, so to speak. Um, it's kind of difficult to pull out just one item and isolate it because they play against each other. Okay. All right, so at least now we have a basic idea of what's happening in an RLC circuit. Right. We know that um, the sort of speed of it is a function of L and C, right? You know, uh, the um, larger these components are, the slower it is, right? Basically, you know, if you thought in terms of, um, let's say, a product of L and C, then we would be looking at a slower and slower result. This ringing, 
would be slower and slower, right? We'd get fewer and fewer of these humps, fewer and fewer of these cycles in a given period of time, in a second, okay? Um, yes, this does correlate. For those of you that have already looked at some of the AC uh, videos, you've maybe looked at the series resonant or parallel resonant. Yes, this does correlate with what's called the resonant frequency of the circuit, all right? Okay, we don't usually refer to it as a resonant frequency in this, in this particular case, but there is a correlation between those two things, okay? So, bigger resistance, more damping, it's like friction, okay? So, we don't get the bouncy bouncy. You get a small value, you get lots of this, all right? So, certainly not as simple a uh, set of waveforms as we would get with just an RL or an RC because you only have one reactive element. Those are called first order networks. So they have a very simple kind of response. When you have something like this with two reactive elements, this is referred to as a second order system, and it gets a lot more complicated. But it can get a lot more complicated than that. You know, there are third order and fourth order and so on systems. But we are not going to look at those, okay? At least not yet. So I hope this illuminates a little bit for you, right? Helps you out a little bit. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments. Until next time, take care. See ya.